Hey guys, this is Doa, and uh, today is the day that we've been highly anticipating. It is the day where we get to find out what the changes to the classic and basic set cards are. Going into the release of Whispers of the Old Gods uh, a while back, if you're not uh, up to date, I guess, on things, Blizzard said that they're going to change some of the original cards that were released with Hearthstone in the basic set and the classic set, uh, just to kind of tweak the balance a little bit, make things uh, work a little bit smoother, I guess, in uh, standard for the uh, Whispers of the Old Gods expansion. So, here are the results. Here are the cards that are, are going to be changed, and we're going to look at them one by one, and uh, I'm going to give you my uh, first impressions, and uh, yeah, we'll see how they are. So, I guess we'll start with Ancient of Lore. Now, obviously, Druid was a class that uh, a lot of people thought needed some changes. There are some cards that are just in every single Druid deck, no matter what, they're just so good. They kind of have, you know, like, multiple Doctor Booms, basically, where if you're going to make a deck, you're probably going to put this card in it, only we're talking about just the Druid class in this particular case. But here's the first nerf. Uh, Ancient of Lore, it's the same, except that uh, when you draw a card, you draw one instead of two with the uh, choose one. It just says, draw a card or restore five health. So, I mean, I guess first impression is that it makes uh, the choice a little bit harder to make. Generally, you always want to go for the draw unless you really, really need the health. Now, you know, you probably still want to go for the draw, but the health can seem a little bit more appealing if you don't necessarily need that one card. Um, a 5-5 five, five for 7 is is still a little bit weak, you know, and before that 5-5 five, five body was nice because you got to draw two cards and fill up your hand essentially and get ready for the next turns when that 5-5 five, five was most likely cleared, but I don't think this card is bad now. And that's kind of one thing to remember when we're looking at these changes is that Nerfed doesn't necessarily mean bad, it just means less good, if that makes any sense. A card can be not as strong as it used to be and still be a good card in a lot of situations. And uh, I think this nerf kind of achieves Blizzard's objective in that it's still a good card, it's still not bad by any stretch, um, it's not as good as it was, but uh, it's a card now that I think you could make arguments for not including. I think a lot of Druid decks are probably still going to put two of these in there because it is still a, a very good card, but the fact that you only draw, you know, one card out of this, it's not quite as appealing, um, makes the choice a little bit harder when you're playing it, makes the choice a little bit harder to uh, fill that seven mana spot with a five, five. but um, overall I think it's still a pretty good card and we're probably going to see uh, a lot of it, but uh, it's not going to be an auto-include now, which is good, I think that's uh, the change that Blizzard needed to make, so it's uh, a little bit surprising, but it's okay. I'm not necessarily opposed to this one. Let's move on to, there we go, to Force of Nature. So this one surprised me a lot, actually. Um, in terms of talking about the Force of Nature, Savage Roar combo, I really expected them to nerf Savage Roar because it's it's basically just kind of a better version of Bloodlust, the Shaman card. Uh, obviously, uh, Bloodlust is five mana to give plus three attack to all your minions. For that turn, Savage Aura is 3 mana to give plus 2 attack to all your minions, including you. So, you make up for that lack of 1 minion damage across uh, each uh, creature with 2 damage to yourself a lot of the times. So, it's it's just objectively a, a better card, I think. So, uh, I kind of thought they were going to nerf that. I thought maybe, you know, making it 1 mana more expensive would have been appropriate. Uh, something to that degree, but uh, no, Force of Nature actually is a card that got the, the change. So it went from summon three treants with charge that died at the end of the turn to just summon three two two treants. So they don't die anymore, they uh, don't have charge anymore, and the card is one cheaper as well. So it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting card now. Um, one thing to think about is that this doesn't really fit the beast synergy that uh, Blizzard has been kind of pushing with Druid for a while. So uh, depending on how the beast Druid decks end up shaping up in Whispers of the Old Gods, uh, this card probably, you know, won't be included, but if you're looking at some of the other powers that Druid has, uh, Druid has the ability to buff a lot of minions, um, it has a lot of buff cards that really aren't used that much right now, and something like this could theoretically fit into that. Uh, I was kind of hoping, personally, for the Savage Roar nerf, because I always thought Force of Nature could find a good niche as sort of a removal card slash a little bit of extra damage card. I kind of liked it in that application, but... That application is gone completely now. Now this is just a card to put minions on the board. And while 2-2 two, two minions aren't terribly strong, obviously this card gets cleared very early by some, or very easily rather, by Consecrate. 2-2 uh, two, two minions at the mid-game and the 5-6 mana turns and all that aren't going to be that strong. But 
Theoretically, it's still something your opponent's going to need to deal with, and so this combined with maybe a little bit of buffing on the druid's part could make this card see a little bit of use, but I don't know, I, I think this card could fall off quite a bit because of this. I'm not quite sure that what this card does now really fits into a lot of the uh, sort of goals of the druid decks that I think we're going to be seeing going forward. So we're going to keep an eye on this one. I think it's going to drop off a lot. I think Savage Drawer is still going to stick around for sure. But Force of Nature, probably not going to see uh, too much more of, unless, like I said, we have some sort of big uh, buffing druid deck that comes out, which that's a possibility, but I don't know. We'll see. Not so sure with this one. Let's move on to Keeper of the Grove. Um, this is another change that I'm a little bit surprised about. It's a pretty big nerf to this card, going from 2-4 to 2-2 two, two now. Uh, other than that, the card stays the same. Uh, choose one, deal two damage, or silence a minion but having a much weaker body on the board for it. And one of the great things about Keeper of the Grove was it was such a good answer to a lot of aggro decks. It really kept you in the game against things like Zulok, against things like Aggro Shaman sometimes, because not only do you get that immediate board effect of either silencing a minion that's too strong, or killing a minion, like a knife juggler or something like that, but you also had this 2-4 body that could usually go, you know, 2 for 1 as well and, and trade, but you know, looking at that, maybe that's a little bit too much value for a 4-mana card, but uh, I, I'm still not so sure. I, th I think this is still going to be a card that's used. I think the Choose 1 effects are good enough that it's it's okay that it's a 2-2 two -two body. It's still not a 2-1. You know, you can't clear it with Whirlwind effects or anything like that, but it's certainly a lot weaker. It, it's going to, you know, do its effect and then maybe trade, if you're lucky, for, you know, one minion instead of two small minions like we saw in the past. So, certainly a weaker card, but not necessarily a bad card now. I think we're probably still going to see a lot of it, just not as strong. That's about it. Uh, moving on to Iron Beak Owl. Okay, so everybody kind of knew this card was going to get changed. Um, Blizzard had alluded to that fact uh, in the past and some of the things they've said, but it didn't get much of a change. Uh, it went up one mana, from two mana to three mana. Effect is still the same, Silence a Minion, uh, stats are still the same, 2-1. It's just a little bit more expensive now. So the application for this card really hasn't changed a whole lot. It's just a little bit more difficult to include it in a lot of terms as turns as sort of like a combo sort of thing in that you silence a minion and then you get in with a charge minion that you're also buffing with something else. So you're going to be able to put together a little bit less in terms of that. But uh, overall, I don't think it's hurt too much. The thing that makes me a little bit interested with this is that now if we just jump one more mana up to the four mana spot, we've got Spellbreaker, which is that uh, four mana, four, three, and he also silences a minion. And um, with Iron Beak Owl being a three mana, two, one now, maybe a four mana, four, three doesn't seem quite as bad. It's going to give you a little bit more board presence. It's uh, going to be a little bit less expensive, or a little bit more expensive, rather, of course. But with Iron Beak Owl fitting into less, you know, big multiple card playing turns, maybe Spellbreaker could see a, a little bit of rev uh, revival here too. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing that uh, this card maybe main makes it okay to play another card. I think a lot of people are still going to default to Iron Beak Owl because again, it is cheap. You don't really care about the body too much. You just want the silence. And uh, one mana doesn't necessarily change that a whole lot. But uh, it does make you think a little bit more. So it's a, it's a small change with Iron Beak Owl. I don't know if it's going to affect it a whole lot. I think you're still going to probably put one of these in a lot of decks. But uh, it's something to, to kind of think about a little bit. Let's move on to Big Game Hunter. Uh, big change for the Big Game Hunter. Uh, same minion, 4-2, destroy a minion with 7 attack or more. But he goes from 3 mana to 5. That's a, that is a pretty big change. You can't play your Dr. Boom and then BGH your opponent's Dr. Boom on the same turn anymore. And so, uh, with this guy, uh, you're not going to be able to quite deal with the board as easily. And that's an interesting thing to kind of think about, in that it wasn't just the individual strength of Big Game Hunter that was uh, a problem, but it was the fact that you could Big Game Hunter and play other cards in the same turn to deal with the other stuff that this big minion was doing, right? So now it's going to be a situation where it's going to be hard to play a lot of other stuff with Big Game Hunter, and because of that, it's going to be harder to deal with your opponent's board. Now, that said, I still don't really like Big Game Hunter in general to begin with. I think just straight up, having a neutral minion that just kills something with 7 attack or more is just not too great. Um, but 
at least this is going to make it a little bit safer to play those bigger minions because you know that even the even if it does get removed it's going to be most of your opponent's turn or at least half of your opponent's turn to do that um i still think the card should probably be removed but uh it's it is what it is you know and at least this does uh, change it uh, a little bit more uh hearthstone in general has always been very removal heavy and it seems like a lot of the changes we're seeing in uh, classic, uh, in these cards rather, are uh, changes that make minion removal a little bit more difficult. And uh, that may seem strange because uh, we just talked about a card that got less health. We talked about a card that puts out minions that die easily. But the point is, is that the cards, what these cards did, was actually remove things very effectively. So the fact that you can remove those cards a little bit easier. Uh, doesn't really matter too much. What's more important is that it's it's going to be more difficult, I think, in this expansion, in standard play going forward, to remove your opponent's board. And uh, Blizzard has said in the past that they want Hearthstone to be kind of this game where you put minions out and you battle on the board with your minions. And this kind of uh, goes towards that objective, it seems like. So, BGH, you know, again, I don't like the concept of the card. I never really have. But at least this is a little bit better, sort of. We'll see. Moving on to Hunter's Mark, uh, I think this was a really obvious change. Zero mana spells have been a problem for a long time. They have uh, uh, they've gotten nerfed, you know, progressively throughout the years of Hearthstone. So this was inevitable. Not much to say about this one. Uh, Hunter's Mark going from zero mana to one. It's a good change. You don't want to get, you know, basically free removal essentially. And this kind of goes along with what I was saying, where uh, Blizzard is making removal a little bit harder. And this doesn't make it too much harder, but at least it costs something. You know, I, I don't think zero mana spell should really be a thing in any card game. So it's good to see uh, uh, this go up to one mana. Old change. Should have happened a while ago. Good it's happening now. It's about all there is to say about Hunter's Mark. So moving on to Blade Flurry. I think this was a, a change that a lot of people were surprised about. It went from the classic two mana, destroy your weapon and deal its damage to all enemies, to four mana, destroy your we uh, weapon and deal its damage to all enemy minions. So... That means that the big blade flurry with uh, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil combos are kind of dead in terms of it doing a lot of damage to your opponent. Uh, you're not going to get that, you know, theoretical 12 damage to your opponent from hitting him with a, a six attack weapon and then blade furying for six more. You know, you're going to be able to clear the board, but you're going to be doing a little bit less damage to face. And again, Blizzard seems to want to push the game towards straight up minion battling on the board. Less big damage combos, less, you know, OTK-esque kind of things. And this sort of fits into it. Um, if I'm playing sort of a slower control rogue deck, I might still include this. I don't think it's necessarily a uh, trash card now or anything like that. It's certainly much weaker. But it is still theoretically good board clear. Uh, four mana is kind of expensive if we're talking about a... Well, no, not really. I mean, it's, it's strictly... It's it's interesting. It it's uh you're th you're seeing my kind of thought process happen right now because if you think about cards like Hellfire, it's four mana for three damage to everything. So the drawback is that you hurt yourself, you hurt your own minions. Blade Flurry is four mana, and if you think about it paired with something like Deadly Poison, that's a three damage board clear on your opponent's minions. Uh, it requires an extra card to do, of course, but you know you still get the extra attack on the weapon or that you'll do before you play this card. Of course, you're not a noob in Blade Flurry right after you put the oil on the weapon. No, that's insane. But uh, you also don't really get to do damage to your opponent. So I think it's still good board clear. Yeah, I think it'll still be used in some uh, slower rogue decks. And, and if we see sort of the more control rogue emerge out of this next set, uh, I think this is card is probably going to be included. So it's certainly a lot weaker and it certainly takes away a lot of the killing power that rogue has right now in the meta. But we're going into a whole new expansion. We're going into standard with a lot of cards dropping out. So those are all things we need to consider as far as like the strength of this kind of card. So I think it'll still be used. I think it'll be uh, uh, maybe one include for a little while in slower rogue decks, but I think it'll come back. I think it's still certainly got a place uh, in the rogue sort of card building mentality, I guess. All right, Knife Juggler. Well, I mean, it's not much of a nerf, is it? It's a uh, two mana for a two two instead of a three two now. Still does the same effect after you summon a minion, deal one damage to a random enemy. And it's the one damage, it's the knives actually being juggled that makes this card so strong, not necessarily the three attack. Um, of course, you can't do things like trade with an Orshark Cleric or a unbuffed Mana Worm anymore or something like that. 
but uh, it still doesn't change what made this card really, really strong. So as far as I'm concerned, it's basically a non-change. Uh, it really doesn't do a whole lot to uh, affect this card's usefulness and affect people choosing to use this card in their decks. I think it's still going to be put in a, a lot of different decks, and we're going to see it a lot. It's just going to be a little bit less strong on the board, but it's still juggling knives. The knife juggler is still juggling knives, so that's the strength. That's why people include him. Still going to be included. Uh, not a big change there. Nothing else really more to say. I think it's not really going to affect the knife juggler much at all. Uh, moving on to Lepernome. Oh, my poor Lepernome. Why? Nerfed. He was nerfed from a 2-1 to a 1-1. And he's still a pretty good card. It's it's not bad. A 1-1 one, one that... Uh, a 1-1 one, one for 1, rather, that deals 2 damage to the enemy hero when it dies. That's still a good card. That's still a good aggressive card. It's just not as insane as it was. And, you know, let's be honest. Lepernome was certainly the best 1-mana card in the game, in my opinion. As far as neutral cards go, as far as cards that have a profound effect on the board, a lot of times this guy would end up being 4 damage or more for 1 mana. So... Yeah, it was really, really strong. I don't think it needed a nerf. I don't think anybody out there was saying, Oh no, I would have won if not for that horrible Leper Gnome. I get owned by Leper Gnome every game on the ladder. Like, nobody's saying that. But it was a really strong card. Uh, it's still good. It's just not quite as good. And uh, again, this kind of fits in with what seems to be Blizzard's mentality too, where they want us to just have more options. They want us to, like, think about including other cards rather than this one. So... The fact that Lepernome is nerfed, that might make something like a uh, Argent Squire a little bit more appealing. You get the 1-1 one, one with Divine Shield there. Uh, interesting to note, Lepernome does now interact with Hobgoblin, so for the wild format players that are run gonna run Hobgoblin deck, Lepernome's really good now. And uh, for the players that are playing Standard, that new Paladin card that uh, gives Divine Shield to anything with uh, one attack that comes out, that's gonna be something that gets uh, benefited from it too. But uh, overall, I think it's... Uh, I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing in the world. I'm not going to, you know, lose a lot of sleep over this. But I don't think it necessarily needed to be changed. I get why they did it, though. So that's okay. It's fine. Moving on to Arcane Golem. I wasn't expecting this one at all. Uh, this is interesting. So it went from, a uh, big change for this card, uh, went from 3 mana for a 4-2 with charge, battle cry, give your opponent a mana crystal, to now 3 mana for a 4-4, give your opponent a mana crystal for the battle cry. So, uh, big change. Doesn't charge anymore. So all of those combos that use Arcane Golem are going to be gone. Uh, the usefulness of this card in decks like Face Hunter or Face Warrior or Face Anything really is uh, kind of over. This card has now become a card that you include in more of sort of a board flooding zoo sort of style. And it's similar to uh, Dancing Swords in that you get a 4-4 four, four for 3 but with a negative effect. Obviously Dancing Swords gives your opponent a card when it dies. Um, Arcane Golem gives your opponent a mana crystal right away. And so it makes me a little bit nervous about using this card because if you're getting yourself extra value, you're paying one less mana for a 4-4, four, four, but you're also giving your opponent a mana crystal so they'll be able to play a card theoretically that can uh, stand up to this card, that kind of meets this card in terms of stats on their turn because they're getting the extra mana. So when I look at this card, I really wonder, you know, are you really getting any extra value now? Um, getting a 4-4 four, four for 3 looks good on paper, but then if you think about what your opponent can play with that extra mana crystal next turn, I don't know if this guy is really worth it anymore. Um, I don't think he's going to really be used much at all, uh, honestly. I think this card's going to drop off in a big way. I think maybe if uh, this card was 3 mana for a 5-5 five, five and gave your opponent a mana crystal, that would make him, you know, really good. Or maybe something like 3 mana for a 4-5. That might be a, a little bit more uh, reasonable. Just give him the, the chill and yeti stats, but give your opponent that same mana crystal. Just make him a little bit harder to remove, because I think right now, with him being 4-4 uh, four, four for 3, but your opponent gets a mana crystal so they can play something bigger the next turn anyway, uh, I don't think it makes this guy that good. So I think we're going to have to say goodbye to Arcane Golem as far as usefulness in standard format competitive decks. Uh, I'm sure people are going to try it out. I think he's probably going to be played a little bit early on, but I think it's going to drop off pretty fast. So I think this is the beginning of the end for Arcane Golem. Uh, moving on to Molten Giant. Uh, another pretty big change. Went from 20 mana to 25 mana. So what that means is that now you're not going to get that 0 mana Molten Giant until you are at 5 health. So you have to get much lower to play it. 
Um, obviously things like handlock are really hurt by this because uh, it gets a little bit more, it makes it a little bit more dangerous to get that low, you know, and play those uh, Molten Giant Defender Vargas turns. And obviously handlock has fallen off a lot uh, because of things like Reno Warlock coming out that's just kind of objectively a, a better deck competitively right now. But uh, the other thing to consider here is that Blizzard has been removing through these changes and through things like uh, Nax and GVG fall out, falling out, and through some of the stuff coming in Whispers of the Old Gods, they've been removing a lot of the uh, bigger bursts, right? They've been removing a lot of the stuff where you need to worry about being at 14 health for a Druid, or like 10 to 15 health against an Aggro Shaman, or although a lot of that is still there, arguably, although Arcane Dome really isn't anymore, you know, or something like, uh, basically there's just a lot of changes where Going to 5 health isn't going to be quite as devastating as it used to be. It's still going to be really dangerous, but it's not going to be like, alright, I'm auto-losing next turn kind of thing. So, are people going to use Molten Giant in uh, decks if Handlock comes back? I don't know. Probably. Maybe you put one in. I'm kind of curious to see how this one uh, ends up, because uh, it's really going to be dependent on the uh, cards that are, on the decks rather, that are, are used in competitive uh, when Whispers of the Old Gods comes out. It's really going to depend on what people find, you know, what sort of burst people find, if this card really becomes worth it or not. So this is one to keep an eye on. I think it could see some use, but it makes it much, much more risky to play because now at 10 mana, it's still going to cost 5. So, I don't know. I think we're going to, I think we're going to, um, or rather at 10 life, it's still going to cost 5. So... Yeah, I think we're going to see a drop off a little bit, but depends on the cards in the meta. We'll find out. Or decks in the meta, rather. Uh, moving on to Master of Disguise. Used to be 4 for a 4-4, four, four. Battlecry, give a friendly minion stealth. It's still 4 for a 4-4, four, four, but now, give, friendly, give a friendly minion stealth until your next turn. So basically, the minion that you give stealth to is only going to be protected, quote-unquote, for uh, one turn, just during your opponent's turn. And then during your turn, it's going to become unstealthed again. So... You know, I've never been a huge fan of this card in general. It's a little bit expensive for the effect. Uh, I think it's it's good stats for the mana. Obviously, 4-4 four, four for 4 is great, but it kind of falls into the same category as something like Dark Iron Dwarf does, in my mind, where the effect that it gives you is good, but it's just not good enough to see a lot of use. Uh, Dark Iron Dwarf used to be used a lot in Zoo, but uh, we've seen it kind of fall off a little bit. Rarely you see one now in Zoo decks. And uh, just like rarely you see Master of Disguise really in any rogue deck. Uh, so I, I don't think that this is going to really change a whole lot with this card. Depends a lot on, um, again, the synergy people can find between this card and the stuff coming out in Whispers of the Old Gods. I think, you know, that is kind of going to be what, uh, what causes this card to be used or not. But... Uh, I don't know, I mean, I think it's a it's a, probably a better change, because giving a friendly minion stealth forever can lead to some really awkward situations where you can just stealth something, your opponent can't remove it, you just build up that card until finally it's just ready to wreck people, and that's what Blizzard seems to be kind of worried about. So, yeah, uh, eh, it's, a, it's probably a good change. I don't think it's really going to change a whole lot. Um, Master of Disguise looks a lot like Secret Keeper with a mask on, actually, now that I think about it. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. And okay, so that's it for the cards. One thing I wanted to mention, though, is uh, I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see any nerfs to mage cards, specifically things like Ice Block, which I know is a concern uh, for the team, and uh, other kind of stuff like that, uh, freeze cards in general. Freeze Mage seems to be alive and well in this next meta. I don't think a lot's going to change there, uh, because a lot of the cards that make Freeze Mage good come from Classic. Obviously, Mad Scientist is going away, and so... Maybe uh, Blizzard sees that in itself as enough of a nerf in competitive play that they don't feel a need to change Ice Block or Ice Barrier or any of the other things that uh, Freeze Mage really uses. But uh, it's interesting. I, I expected some changes for Freeze Mage, so I'm a little bit surprised that that uh, didn't come through. Uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I know this is going to be a very divisive topic, very divisive video. I'm going to include the link to the official Blizzard post about this in the description of the video so that you can go and see what Blizzard had to say about the changes as well, and uh, comment on that, but uh, also comment on my video. Let, you, let me know what you think about this stuff, about my thoughts on it. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at GGDoa, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, still looking forward to Whispers of the Old Gods. I think the changes are going to be really fascinating in terms of deck building. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'll see you in the next video.